Today I'm going to be sharing homeschool curriculum picks for my ninth grader, my very first homeschool high schooler. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be the first in a series here on our channel where I will be sharing our homeschool curriculum picks for the 2022-2023 homeschool year. Today I'm going to be sharing specifically about my ninth grader, my brand new freshman in high school, and the curriculum I have picked for him. In case you are new around here, hi, my name is Sarah. I am currently homeschooling four kids a ninth grader, an eighth grader, a third grader, a pre-K, and then I have a toddler two years old running around as well. We have been homeschooling for just a little bit more than 10 years now, but that, that does not mean I feel like I know what I'm doing. I don't. Um, I feel like I piece this all together every single year. Now, before we jump in, I do feel the need to just share a little disclaimer. We live in a blessed homeschool world that is full of seemingly thousands of curriculum choices and options. It, it really has never been a better time to be a homeschooler. But that being said, the curriculum picks that I am sharing today, I chose these because this is what I believe is going to be working well for our family in this season of life for this specific child. In no way am I saying that these are the perfect ninth grade curriculum choices and every homeschooler should choose these. Uh, I don't ever want to contribute to homeschool mama comparison or competition because let's be real, it, it's definitely a temptation out there. But I, I am just sharing today to give you some encouragement, some ideas, some inspiration, and just give you a little bit of a peek into our homeschool world and what we will be using for this homeschool year. All right, so to get started, let me just share a little bit of a big picture perspective or framework as to why I chose the curriculum that I did for this school year. Noah, who is going into ninth grade, he will be 15 to start this school year. At this point in his homeschooling journey, he can pretty much do most of his schoolwork completely independently. But that is not to say that he is just off alone by himself doing his schoolwork. That, that is definitely not the case. Oftentimes he pairs off with his younger sister who is in eighth grade and the two of them do the bulk of their school together. They will work together, collaborate, and just work side by side. I also require both of them to do multiple check-ins with me throughout the day where I can just go through and make sure that they are staying on track with their work. I also make sure to sit down with them at least once a week with their planners, with their calendars, and help them map out their schoolwork for the week, help them to balance out their workloads and, and make sure that they are doing the right amount of work in each subject every single day. Now, Noah also does participate with us in our morning time or our morning basket time. Uh, I can share a little bit more about that in another video, uh, but that is one group subject that he does with us. He also requested this year to do history as a group, and I, I will get into the specifics about that later in this video, but Noah definitely likes to have a balance of independent work and group work as a family. And, and I just feel like that's a very appropriate thing to be doing at this point in his schooling. I, I don't wanna just get to ninth grade rip the band-aid and make him go off and do all of his work by himself. I want him to still feel a part of our big group family homeschool. Now, along that same vein, I do need to say that this is a college prep workload. As I was planning out Noah's transcript for high school and, and thinking through what his high school curriculum would look like, I had to keep in mind that he has not made a decision about what his career path is going to be just yet. He has not decided if he definitely wants to go to college or what he wants to pursue after high school. And so I just decided that we would start out with a college prep workload uh, just to get our feet wet. Now, in my mind, maybe this is totally wrong, but I feel like it's better to have a heavier workload in ninth and 10th grade. So that way in 11th and 12th, you have a little bit more free time to pursue extracurricular activities or work studies, maybe have a part-time job or re really start diving into what you wanna do after high school. All right, so let's 
let's just jump right into it. As usual, I will go through and list out different curriculum subject by subject. I will also be sure to include timestamps down below if you want to jump around in this video at all. All right, so let's start with math. For those of you that have been around our channel for a while, this will not be a surprise to you. Noah will be continuing Math You See. He just finished the pre-algebra workbooks and he will be beginning Algebra 1. Now, to go along with this workbook and test book, I also have the DVD lessons where Mr. Demi goes through and gives some instructions to go along with every single lesson. And then he also has a scientific calculator he will be using. And Noah asked for some graph paper. I bought this in bulk for him. He really likes to use this as like kind of scratch paper to work out problems on the side. So some graph paper. We also own all of the different manipulatives that come along with Matthew C that really help if you have a visual learner. It's kind of obvious by Matthew C. Now, just a quick note of how I'm planning on implementing Matthew C in our week to week life. On Mondays, Noah will go through and watch the DVD lesson from Mr. Demi and work through worksheet A. I will kind of go through this with him, do some example problems as needed. For the rest of the week, he will do worksheets B through D at his discretion, doing as many of them as he thinks he needs in order to master the lesson. I allow him to use the instructor's manual to go through and check his work every day to make sure he is on the right track. And then on Fridays, he takes the test in the test book. And this is the part of the curriculum that I grade and I will be keeping track of for his running grade for the year. There are tests that go with every lesson as well as I think quarterly unit tests and a final test at the back. So that is how I will be grading and tracking math for math you see this year. All right, so then moving on to language arts, I am going to label this course English Grammar and Composition. This will be for one credit in English for ninth grade. To start with, Noah is going to finish up analytical grammar. He did season one in this workbook in eighth grade, and he will be doing hopefully seasons two and three this year. Now, I did do a full flip through and review of this curriculum if you're interested in looking at it more, but in short, it is a very in-depth, rigorous grammar curriculum. And so this will definitely be a challenge for him to complete all of this in one school year. Paired alongside that for writing, we are going to continue using IEW Institute for Excellence in Writing. Now, I was really struggling to decide what level I wanted Noah to move into for ninth grade. IEW has so many awesome options for writing courses, especially for high school. And so when I was at a homeschool conference, I stopped in at their booth and I had a really long and good conversation with one of their representatives. It was so great because she took a lot of time to kind of walk through each of my kids and help me decide what level fit each of them perfectly. So for Noah this year, he is going to do level B year two for structure and style for students. Now, something specifically I wanna share, I felt like this was super helpful. In IEW, there are nine different units of writing that your kids will go through. And for me, like most homeschoolers out there, we tend to start our homeschool year with a bang and we do really, really well August through about February. And then once that spring fever hits, we, we kind of trickle off. And so I feel like my kids have done really, really well with maybe units one to five or one to six, and then they haven't had as much practice with units six through nine. And so the representative mentioned to me that if that is the case, if you want your kids to have extra practice, especially in those later units in IEW, doing any of these year two with the structure and style will really, really help with that. Now, this level, it does come with DVD instructions that are honestly just fabulous. They give you weekly lessons, uh, two-part lessons that your kids can watch from Andrew Poudwell that walk them through and help them to write every single one of their weekly papers. In a lot of ways, I am able to be pretty hands-off with this curriculum. 
I just have to edit their papers and grade their papers every single week. We absolutely love IEW. We've been using it for five or six years now, and I will be sure to include my favorites page down below in the description box. It's a link at IEW where I share all of our different favorite curriculums from Institute for Excellence in Writing. All right, and then the last vein of language arts, Noah is going to work through Spelling UC's Level F Ancient Achievements. I absolutely love Spelling UC because it is not grade based, but it is skill based. And so you, you just fit right where your skills are. This is wonderful for copy work and dictation. You guys know we love Spelling UC. Noah started in level A back in early elementary school and he has just slowly but surely been working his way through the program. And so I, I intend for him to go all the way through and finish level G. We, we love Spelling UC. All right, and then moving on to history and literature. As I mentioned earlier, we are planning on using history as a group subject in our homeschool this year. And so we are going to be using Gather Round. I am planning on working through most, if not all, of the US history mini units. As we are working through these, my plan is for Noah to really focus on listening to me read aloud from the teacher guide, having him take really excellent notes as he is listening, and then creating flashcards and different things to study the material. I feel like this is really good practice for if he does go to college where you have to listen to an oral presentation of a subject and take notes. And so that's what we're gonna be focusing on with history. Paired alongside of this, I have also chosen several novels for Noah to read to go along with the different units. So I, I will just go through real quick and show you each of those. we cover literature in our homeschool is I do not use a specific curriculum or reading comprehension guide. What I have my kids do is I will give them specific amounts of reading that I expect them to do every single week. And then at the end of the week, Noah will do a written narration of what he learned, as well as an illustration to go along with what he read. We call this Lit Logs. If, if you would like more information about that, leave me a comment down below. I've been wanting to make a specific video about literature logs. Uh, so, so let me know if you're interested in that. Oh. I almost forgot to mention that I also stopped and bought a bunch of the YWAM biographies. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Captain John Smith, George Washington. I bought a bunch of these audiobooks that I thought Noah would really enjoy listening to, pairing along with each one of the Gather Round units. All right, and then moving on to science. This is honestly the subject that made me lose the most sleep this spring. I have gone back and forth, looked at dozens of different curriculum choices for science, trying to figure out what was going to be the best fit for Noah, the best fit for our family, the best fit for me as mama. Honestly, science is not my forte, is not something that I feel super experienced or confident in. And so I, I was just really nervous about what would be the best choice for Noah. And I found myself texting one of my really good mama friends um, who was homeschooled alongside of me for years and years. And she recommended this curriculum and let me just say, I'm gonna put a plug here, that as helpful as watching curriculum videos on YouTube is, sometimes the best advice you can get are from friends and moms who know you and know your kids and have experience with curriculum. So big fat thank you to Meredith. We are going to be using Discovering Design with Earth Science by Dr. J. Weil. This is published by Berean Builders. And I, I do wanna put a couple notes here about how we are going to use this curriculum. First of all, I bought the normal student book and the test book to go along with it. And then at their booth, this is one of the things I was really excited about, they actually sell an audiobook plug-in of the student textbook. And so I feel like this will be really helpful for Noah to be able to just play this as he is reading in the book and be able to highlight and take notes as the science book is being read aloud to him. Berean Builders also has videos that you can purchase either lesson by lesson or for the entire school year 
for this level where it has one of their instructors going through and teaching each chapter. And so I think we'll probably be purchasing that as well. Now I am planning on using this as our physical science credit for high school. That's actually what Dr. Weil encouraged me to do. And I'm going to do this also as a lab. So I love that they have a, oh, it's really heavy, sorry, a lab kit to go along with this. And it was very inexpensive, uh, I think 70-ish dollars. And it has every single item that you could possibly need to do all of the experiments in the book. So for me, as a busy homeschool mom, I do not have to run around the house every week and try to find peroxide or tea bags or, or whatever little household item that they need to do their science lab. It, it will all be right here for Noah to just do on his own when he is ready. So I, I'm so excited about this level, about doing earth science, but I'm really happy with all of the little extras that I was able to put along with this course that will really set Noah up for success. And did I mention it wasn't very expensive? And then for foreign language, Noah is going to study Spanish. You may remember that Noah dabbled in Spanish in late elementary school and middle school. We slowly worked our way through song school Spanish levels from Classical Academic Press. They are absolutely wonderful. I definitely recommend them if you are looking for a soft introduction to the Spanish language for your younger kids. But for ninth grade, we decided to go with BJU Press's Spanish One. I chose this based on other homeschool mamas on YouTube's recommendations that have had students work their way through this level and have been very, very happy. I chose to do the distance learning option. This is the DVD set that I borrowed. I decided to do DVDs rather than online videos. There are lessons to go along with every single chapter that are done by a Spanish native speaker. And so I'm just really excited. I think this will be a very good fit and a really good start for him learning Spanish for high school. And then moving on to electives, let's start with fine arts. First of all, this summer, Noah is going to try to tackle two different art courses, uh, a painting course as well as a drawing course. These are both from Artistic Pursuits, and I chose these because they come with DVD lessons. No surprise, you guys know how I love DVD instruction. Um, but there are 36 projects that go with each level, and so I feel like this will be a really fun, fine arts course for Noah. Along with that, Noah is going to continue in his classical piano lessons. That is something he has been doing since, gosh, kindergarten or first grade. So that will count towards more arts credits. And then for his half credit in PE or phys ed, we will continue to attend our homeschool gym class that we like to go to once a week. And paired with that, Noah also does workouts from Beachbody and he is part of a swim team and does all kinds of other sports. So getting that half credit for PE will be no problem. Lastly, as part of electives, I wanted to talk about Bible. Uh, I thought I brought these books up here, but I guess I forgot them in the basement. Noah is going to continue working through the not consumed studies. I'll try to put an image right here of them, but I bought their entire youth pack of nine different Bible studies last year when they were on sale. And these have just been a wonderful fit for my teenagers. They have really enjoyed working through these Bible studies. And so I think Noah covered five of them in eighth grade. So he'll just continue through and do the rest of the studies this year. Um, he's also shown some interest in doing um, Proverbs, reading one proverb every day. You know, if it's the second day of the month, read Proverbs 2. If it's the 23rd day of the month, read Proverbs 23. So I think that's something else he's committing to doing for this school year. All right, guys, well, that wraps it up. That is all of the curriculum. It was a lot that Noah is going to be using for ninth grade. If you are interested in getting more information about how I plan to do grading and assigning credits and transcripts and all of that stuff that, you know, makes me lose sleep as a high school mama, let me know down below. I, I'm really interested to see what content you guys want here on YouTube as far as homeschooling high school. I, I really want to take you guys along on this journey with me and, and give you guys information that will be helpful and encouraging. All right, guys, well, I will continue to post our curriculum picks over the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Subscribe if you have not done so already. Hope you guys are having a great week. 
See you later.